Right now, the NRA has a new president. Will it be a dawn of a new day for the massive gun lobby or just more of the same? You might want to hold off on that answer until you check out this guy's resume. Up next, immigration. Will immigration legislation wither on the vine just like gun control did? And what should be done to keep the train on the tracks this time? And a little bit later, has Syria crossed that red line? And if so, does America have the stomach for involvement in yet another Middle Eastern confrontation? Good evening and welcome to RFL. I'm Andrew Whitman, in tonight for Richard French. Thanks so much for joining us. We begin tonight in Houston, where the National Rifle Association and its members are gathering for their annual convention. They're celebrating the Second Amendment as only the NRA can. The gathering predicted to draw its largest crowd ever, uh, given the current political debate raging over gun control. A Texas-sized celebration. A record 70,000 people expected in Houston this weekend for the NRA's annual three-day convention. The message? Leave our freedom alone. That line drawing heavy applause. There were also loud cheers when Executive Vice President Wayne LaPierre took aim at the press. The media is engaged in a vicious effort to attack the Second Amendment and demonize lawful American gun owners. Another featured speaker. That is not unlike a hole in one. Proud gun owner, Texas Governor Rick Perry. This year's gathering comes as the country discusses gun control in the wake of the Sandy Hook Elementary Massacre. The crowd celebrated the defeat of legislation in Congress that would have expended background checks on gun purchases. We want to prevent Newtown, not take advantage of it. While the NRA takes a victory lap, gun violence victims are letting senators back home in their districts know they don't appreciate that vote. What, what is wrong with universal background checks? I believe that the focus should be on focusing on fixing the broken system right now. <clears throat> that New Hampshire Senator Kelly Ayotte there. Even though Congress is on spring recess, Senator Ted Cruz of Texas, he's going to be the most prominent current member of Congress scheduled to address this year's convention. All right, let's uh, turn to our table on this for tonight. Michael Taubman, principal at Hudson TG, a political consulting firm. He's also a former advisor to Senator Chuck Schumer. And we're joined, as always, by Dominic Carter, political journalist and author. Uh, first up, the NRA, are they still as relevant as they were before Newtown? Are they more relevant than they were before Newtown? What's your take on where the group is right now? Uh, we discussed on this show before, I, I sincerely and strongly believe that the NRA's mission is to advance and preserve an idea of America that is becoming increasingly not relevant to our national discussion as we become a more urban and suburban and exurban country, preserving a certain rural way of life about guns and about not being urban or suburban is something that appeals especially to folks in the U.S. Senate, where no matter what your state's population or, or population centers, you still have two U.S. Senators. Don't. As relevant as ever, and I think Newtown um, highlighted that issue. Uh, the NRA, whether you like them or dislike them, they're a powerful force. Certainly they're a foe that you're just not going to just get around them. They're not going to just lay down, lay down and, and die. Newtown proved that, Andrew. And so, I mean, I think it's rather unfortunate. I think that most people that live in, in uh, uh, states like New York, we don't understand really the NRA. But at the same time, there are many of us that respect the Second Amendment. Mm. And, and feel that people have that right, but not just to take it to an extreme. The new incoming president of the NRA, anti-Obama, as you might expect, mm -hmm. referred to the Civil War in a speech recently as the War of Northern Aggression. Uh, right, the, the, the look on your face sort of said it, said it all there, Donald. I was trying to hide it. I was trying to come up with a comparison <laughs> for the NRA today as I was getting all this information. And, and what came to mind was the Tea Party. And, and just bear with me for one second on this. Influential, certainly able to impact legislation, but as its members fight each other for the spotlight in a very insular group, mm -hmm. you wind up with, I don't want to say the crazies, but you wind up with the, 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 the most extreme voices being the ones that dominate the group. And the Tea Party, I, I think you could argue, has lost some of the leverage it had, some of the power that it had, let's say, in 2009. First of all, do you like that comparison, and do you see that possibly happening to the NRA, making it less significant? Yes, but they have a constitutional amendment protecting them. So they are basically a trade association for the gun industry, mm -hmm. but 
under the umbrella of a constitutional amendment. So it's a little different. The Tea Party is a political movement, like the Granger movement or the progressive movement or a good government movement, and, and that ebbs and flows. But because we have the Second Amendment, it's a little bit different. And, and it's one where they, they will remain relevant and strong and their voices, like uh, Mr. LaPierre, he's not going anywhere. No. Um, he's gonna continue to be the voice and the face of the NRA, and that's whether we like it or not. Right, it's, it's meet the new boss, same as the old boss. As long as LaPierre is there and the courts roll back and the Senate refuses to move on gun legislation, the NRA will stay relevant, as unfortunate as I believe that is. LaPierre's motto, you can take this microphone when you pry it from my cold. Uh, <laughs> you mentioned the Second Amendment mm -hmm. and that being the, the bulwark basically for the entire NRA. I haven't heard a lot of talk on the left about going after the Second Amendment. Is it that it's so politically untenable to do so or is it is that a third rail that people are afraid of touching and why isn't that coming up more? It's more of a Pandora's box than it is a third rail. When you start talking about rolling back what some people believe are very important constitutional protections, well then why not the Reconstruction Amendments and why not Civil Rights Amendments and why not? So you just, that's not a place you want to go. Where you want to go is legislation and court decisions that redefine our modern understanding of what these amendments are. But gun, but gun control advocates say that there is a misread in the Second Amendment, mm -hmm. that, it's, that the original intent was about militias and back in a time when muskets were the most powerful weapon that were available to folks, and that it's simply been either misconstrued or it's been overused mm -hmm. uh, as we've... Just, as we've Andrew, yeah. just, just imagine the Obama White House, just imagine trying to go after the Second Amendment. Yeah. Just, just imagine, it, it's, it wouldn't be a pretty picture. But, but why not others on the left? Why not progressive groups? Why isn't you know the Center for American Progress going no win, that way? No win situation. Yeah, other, other priorities. Okay. Uh, finally, Joe Biden was talking about some top secret plan that he has mm -hmm. for getting gun control back in front of uh, lawmakers again. There's been some talk about trying to bring it back when Congress comes back next week. Do you think it's dead for the foreseeable future or is there a chance we might revisit background checks at very least? I, I don't think that Joe Biden's ever been able to keep a, a, a secret. Um, and where I'm from in Brooklyn, we say three people can keep a secret only if two of them are dead. Um, and yes. No, and, I, none, and none of them are Joe Biden. And none of them are Joe Biden. Um, it, 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 it's possible. I think uh, we saw in today's paper and yesterday's papers that the, the vote, the defeat in the Senate of gun control legislation um, crystallizes the issue and ensures that it will come back up and be a lot closer, if not successful. These polls that we've seen where some people who voted, some senators who voted against the background check bill have taken a hit, some who supported it have been buoyed in the polls. Does that move the needle in terms of getting this packed through Congress? I, I would hope so, but, but I don't believe at the end of the day that it will. I think that all politics are local, mm -hmm. no matter what polling seems to indicate. And frankly, I think you can take any poll on any given day and spin it almost any way that you want As to. As they go back into their districts for recess um, and for the summer months, they're gonna get beaten up away, the way a lot of uh, members of Congress got beaten up over the Affordable Care Act, so. I think that's I'm more impactful sure. in a lot of ways than, than polls are. I when agree. You, when you get that group in front of you, people mm -hmm. shouting, people just want a new town mother mm -hmm. asking a question and then walking out of the room. No doubt we have not heard the last of this. We're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we turn to another hot button topic, immigration. Will immigration legislation get pushed off the tracks just like gun control did? And what can keep that train going full speed ahead this go round? That is next when RFL returns. <laughs> 